Koei Tecmo has done something bold, something not all fans are going to like, but I do think it's going to attract more and newer players to the series. The elephant in the room is of course the new visual style. The once heavily feared Demon King is looking like a reckless fool. The once kindly clad Nohime is donning an elegant yukata and uses a bow instead of claws. Samurai Warriors 5 is not a sequel, but a full-on reimagination and reboot of the series. A game that is sure to raise a lot of questions for both the existing fans and newcomers. But fear not, because in this video review I am going to show and tell you everything you need to know, and if you still have any questions by the end of it, all you have to do is drop a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Oh, and if you want to stay up to date with the latest niche and Japanese games, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to not miss out. Now without further ado, let's get into the action. A quick introduction for those unfamiliar with Musa games, or also called Warrior games in the West. They are like a subset of action games where you play as powerful characters that fight hundreds of weaker enemies at once to get through a stage and then fight equally powerful quote unquote boss battles at certain parts and at the end of the stage. In other words, you get to feel like an absolute god on the battlefield, throwing flashy and satisfying attacks left and right. What started out as Dynasty Warriors many years ago, which focuses on the Chinese era of conflict by the way, the spin-off Samurai Warriors focuses on the Sengoku era in Japan, an era in which the country was divided by many clans and warlords trying to increase their influence to ultimately unify the land once more. One of the key characters during this period is Oda Nobunaga, not to be confused with Oda Nobunaga. If you're familiar with Japanese culture, games or even anime, the name Oda Nobunaga is something you might have heard before. He is widely known as the Demon King because of his ruthless actions such as laying waste to entire cities where he took no mercy on innocent lives. Not even children. And this is how he's usually portrayed in media. Well, that or a cute anime girl. But what isn't often portrayed is his life leading up to that point. His younger self, where he didn't have the nickname Demon King yet, but was instead known as the Fool of Owari. This is where Samurai Warriors 5 starts. A young Oda Nobunaga that seeks to fulfill his ambition to unify Japan through his strength and with the help of his allies. And that means battles. Lots of battles, which brings us to the stages. In total there are 69 story stages and each of them takes 20 to 30 minutes to clear with cutscenes included. Half of the stages follows Oda Nobunaga's story which starts out when he is young and reckless and ends with the Honoji incident where he is much older and wears the title of the Demon King. The same story can also be experienced from the perspective of Oda Nobunaga's trusted ally, Mitsuhide Akechi, to give you a better perspective of everything that happened during that time. And finally, there are 9 what-if scenarios where you play as Oda's enemies during very important battles. All in all, this should be good for 25-30 to 30 hours worth of playtime and there's even more to do. But first, let's have a quick look at the gameplay itself. Have you ever played a game where you use cheats, mods or some kind of god mode to become overpowered in battles? Well, that's exactly how I describe the gameplay in Musa games because you literally are a god on the battlefield. With just a few button presses you dish out these big and dramatic attacks that send whole armies flying and occasionally you run into other warrior gods, with which I mean named story characters, but with the exception of the very last boss on the battlefield even they are at your mercy and you can AoE them down with the regular troops. So why is this even fun, you might ask? Honestly for me it's a mixture of great looking characters, big beautiful attacks that feel impactful and the sheer speed at which you can move. This is actually why Hattori Hanzo is one of my favorite characters to date. He can Naruto run across a battlefield in mere seconds and whenever there's a group of enemies he can make quick work of them in a flashy way. The challenge in Samurai Warriors 5 doesn't really come from the fighting itself but rather from how you behave on the battlefield. You see, the developer uses two tricks to give you a challenge. One is by scoring you on time, kills and combo count and the other is by adding extra objectives during each mission of which some of them are hidden. The first trick encourages you to be quick and always keep fighting for the combo counter and kill count. The second trick encourages you to explore the entire battlefield and make strategic use of the two playable characters between which you can switch at any time. 
At the end of each mission you receive scores based on your performance, which come with basic rewards such as gold and weapons, but are also required to unlock the what-if scenarios in the post-game part. It is because of this that you want to replay missions multiple times, and to make it even more fun, you can use any of your unlocked characters whenever you replay a mission that has been cleared before. Speaking of, there are a total of 37 playable characters in the game, which is significantly less than what you'd expect if you've played the other Warriors games. I was afraid that this was mainly due to the new visual style and was more worried that they might re-add fan favorite characters through DLC later, but I'm happy to learn that I was wrong. Well, at least for now. It does feel weird to have a game in the Sengoku era without the iconic characters like Date Masamune and Sanada Yukimura, but from a story perspective it does make sense because everything that happens in Samurai Warriors 5 is from before their time. What is also new is that the movesets aren't tied to characters, but rather to the 15 different weapon types. At the same time, the playable characters can now make use of a variety of weapons while having one preferred one, which if you use gives you access to one or two unique attacks. For instance, the Odachi weapon can be used by almost all characters, but in the hands of our favorite Demon King, it allows you to launch his devastating attack through one of his combos. What remains unique to characters is at least one special attack and of course the ultimate attack. Now I don't know about Geo, but whenever I play through these types of games, especially during the grinding phase, I end up only using 2-3 to three combos over and over again because they either work really well or are just fun to use. With this weapon system it's easier than ever to transition between characters and it also decreases the big gap in power some of the characters used to have. That said, each of the 15 weapons play differently and not all of them are as good due to having a shorter range, but thanks to something called hyper attacks it kind of balances everything out. As you can see on the screen right now, these attacks just make you leap forward so you can close in gaps with the enemies really quickly. This is especially useful when dealing with things like archers. Hyper attacks don't do much damage and are actually parried by bosses, but it definitely helps you get around the battlefield quickly and it's really easy to launch a combo from this. After beating a stage you get experience, skill points and weapon mastery points. All of these are needed to make your character stronger, but only the characters you played receive these. So unplayed characters will generally fall behind at some time and become too weak to play in future stages, but thankfully there is something called stock XP and stock weapon mastery. These are points that you also get from stages that you can use on any character, and while it is definitely not enough to level up everyone at once, it does make it easy to have a new character that you want to play catch up on your mains really quickly. Now there is one gameplay mode that I haven't talked about yet which is Citadel mode. In here you fight short battles where you need to defend two areas and by completing these you get multiple useful rewards. The first is experience, skill points and mastery to make your character stronger. The second is bond experience. By pairing up certain characters in battle you can increase their bond and once the gauge is full you can see a special scene between the two. And third, building materials needed for facilities. There are a total of four facilities that you can level up. The first one is a dojo which you need to level up your characters, then you have the blacksmith to craft and improve weapons, the shop to buy usable items and also DLC items if you ever buy the DLC things, and finally the stables where you can manage and train your horses. By upgrading the facilities you improve the benefits that they bring you. Altogether I think it's nice how they made a single mode for all post game grinding instead of having to go around to find that one single battlefield that is the most efficient to farm. There is a select number of stages in Citadel mode and while they remain the same, the enemies and bonus objectives change every time. So it's still a repetitive grind but it keeps it just a little bit fresh. I also want to briefly mention performance because this game is released across almost every platform out there. The gameplay that you see in the video is not a good representation of what it runs like for everyone because I played it on the PlayStation 5. Koei Tecmo has been kind enough to release a demo version on each of the platforms. So if you're thinking about picking up this game I'd highly urge you to download that first and see how it runs on your system. Which brings me to my final thoughts. Mindless fun is how I would describe my experience with these types of games and it's more prevalent in Samurai Warriors 5 than before. This is mainly because of how the weapon system and post game grind have been set up. You can now just turn on your system, you can hop into a battlefield and have a good time without requiring insane skill or focus. 
This is made even better because you can also play in local and online co-op. So you can just casually play it with your friend and have a fun chat while doing so. On top of that, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. The previous Samurai Warriors games did a good job of making the battlefields and character armors look Japanese, but you could still see traces of the Dynasty Warriors foundations on which they were built. The traditional Japanese ink style, the vibrant colors, the distinct character models all make for a more immersive experience and I think they struck a good balance between realism and anime style. In terms of the OST, so the background music, they moved away from the mixture of electronic music with Japanese instruments to just Japanese instruments. And while I like this direction, I don't think the OST does the game justice. The music isn't bad or anything, but it's just really tame all the time, even during the big dramatic moments like the final battle. Some high tension songs or special themes for the different characters would have been a perfect addition in my opinion. Now what I am not happy with is the fact that they called this game Samurai Warriors 5, because it implies that it's a follow up to 4, just like 4 was a follow up to 3 and 3 was to 2, which is clearly not the case this time around. The previous titles all build upon each other, making little changes with each sequel and expanding on both the story and the amount of characters that you can play. 5 does the complete opposite because it is a full reboot of a series that revolves around a very specific time period within the Sengoku era and is limited in playable characters because of this. Naming it something like Samurai Warriors Kai or Shin Samurai Warriors or just Samurai Warriors would have managed the expectations for the existing fanbase more, because the way it is right now they probably have a lot of questions and can easily be disappointed by what this reboot has to offer. That said, I like the game the way it is. While it is a full price game and you should probably really think if you want to be spending that much on a new title, it should give someone like me up to 80 hours of entertainment with good replay value. I hope they will keep going in this direction with future sequels that will cover the rest of the Sengoku era and all of its conflicts, but even if that happens it's definitely going to take a while. And speaking of this, I actually wonder if they are going to give Dynasty Warriors and Warriors Orochi a similar treatment as to this later down the line. So what about you? Are you an existing fan of these games? Are you new to them? Do you like the changes they made or not really? Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Also consider following me on Twitter because I will be posting more frequently there later this year. And with that said, I want to thank you all for watching and until next time.